Jesus used what I had to feed all of those people. He made me feel so important even though I am so young. Hey boys and girls, it's time to celebrate our birthdays this week. Look at the screen, see if you see your name. If you're having a birthday this week, it should be there. And hey, if it's not there, we still wish you a very happy birthday from GFBC Kids. Hey boys and girls, have you ever felt like you weren't important enough for God to use? Well, let me tell you, that is not true. God has a purpose for your life. And he has a purpose for your life and for your life and for your life. And you are a promise and you are a promise and you are a promise. We are all a promise. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Welcome to GFBC Kids TV, where children learn the truth. Welcome to GFBC Kids News. I'm your anchor, Inform You. And I'm here today to talk to you about 1 Timothy 4.12. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Have you ever felt that way? I have some friends joining us today that will testify God can use you even if you're young. This is my first friend, Samuel. The most amazing thing about Samuel is he started serving God when he was a boy and God spoke to him. Hello, Samuel. Hello, boys and girls. I'm excited to be here. Samuel, can you tell everyone your story, please? I sure can. When I was really young, my mother, Hannah, took me to the temple to live with the priest Eli. God hadn't spoke to the prophets in a very long time. It was night and I was asleep in the temple and I heard someone call Samuel, Samuel. I jumped up and ran to Eli and said, I heard you call me, here I am. But Eli said he didn't call me and to go back to bed. I was in my bed when I heard the voice again. So I ran to see Eli. He said he didn't call me and to go back to bed. Was Eli playing a trick on you? Was he really calling you and just pretending he wasn't? I wondered that, but Eli really didn't play a lot of jokes. Then I heard someone call me again. I ran to Eli and I said, I know you called me, I'm here. That's when Eli realized it was God who was calling me. Oh. He said to go back to bed. And when I heard the voice again, I was to say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So what happened next? Well, I laid down again. Then I heard the voice call me a fourth time. Samuel, Samuel. I said, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Wow, what did God say to you? He said he was going to do something amazing. He was going to keep his promise and people would talk about what he would do for years yes, to come. That's right. Samuel, what do you think God wanted to teach you? I think God wanted to know that I would listen to him every day. God talked to me even though I was young. God will talk to you even if you're a child too. Thanks for coming by Samuel. I know the boys and girls were glad to hear your story. My next friend who will tell his story is David. I'm sure most of you have heard of him. David was the baby in his family, but he did something really big. Thanks David for coming by to visit the boys and girls and telling them your story. Thanks for inviting me. I was the baby boy in my family. All my older brothers were grown and off fighting the Philistines in the war but I was too young. My dad, Jesse, put me in charge of the sheep. It was an important job. Yes, I had to protect the sheep from the wild animals. I had to kill a lion and a bear to keep them from taking our sheep. It was a lonely job. I stayed out in the pasture with the sheep all day and all night. Mm. I would sit on rocks and watch the sheep eat. That's when I started playing the harp and writing songs about God. I could see him in the world he made for us. You may have read some of my songs. They are in the Bible and are called Psalms now. Were you afraid when the bear tried to capture the sheep? 
or afraid when the lion tried to get the lamb? I was afraid, but I knew God would always protect me. It was my job to protect the sheep. Well, tell us about the time you fought Goliath. Like I said, all my brothers were off fighting the war. My dad gave me some food to take to them. When I got to the camp, I found out what was happening. For 40 days, two times a day, the giant Goliath would come out and challenge the children of Israel. Oh my goodness, that sounds very scary, David. He would fight one warrior from our army. Whoever won that fight would decide who won the whole war. Goliath was over nine feet tall. His spear was about five feet long and weighed 15 pounds. That sounds really scary. Did anyone go out to fight Goliath? No, everyone was frightened. I told King Saul that I would fight Goliath. King Saul gave me his armor, but it was so heavy I couldn't walk in it. I gave it back and gathered five smooth stones from the stream and put them in my bag. God was with me when I fought the bear and when I fought the lion. He will be with me now. Weren't you terrified? I don't know if I could have faced the giant when no one else would go. It was scary, but I know God is always with us. Goliath laughed and made fun of me when I walked out to fight him. He said he would feed me to the birds. I shouted to him, you come against me with the sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and cut off your head and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Everyone will know that it is not by the sword or the spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. Wow, that was a great speech. What happened next? Goliath started walking towards me. I ran towards him and took one stone from my back and I put it in my slingshot. I had gotten really good using it while I was taking care of the sheep. I swing it around my head a couple of times and then I let the rock go. Wham! It hit Goliath in the forehead and down he went. Everyone was shocked. The Philistines ran away and our army cheered and chased after them. Well, what was the most important thing you learned that day? I learned that God will use you even when everyone else thinks you are too little. I have one more friend that I'd like to introduce you to today. Do you remember the time in the Bible that Jesus taught this huge crowd of people and everyone stayed so long and they were hungry? But there wasn't anywhere to get food. And the disciples, Jesus' best friends, found a boy who could help. Let's talk to him now. Hi there, friends. I'm glad to see all of you. Well, thank you for coming today. Can you tell our friends about your lunch that you shared with Jesus? Oh, I sure can. Everyone always wanted to hear Jesus teach. He made obeying God seem so easy. God, Jesus would just talk to you so you could understand. And on this day, Jesus talked for a long time. There were so many people. The disciples said there were 5,000 men and then even more women and children. Everyone stayed so long that they were really hungry. And the other disciples were trying to figure out what to do and how to help all the people. One of the disciples saw that I had my lunch. He came over and asked me to come with him to see Jesus. Oh, that sounds so exciting to get to meet Jesus. Oh, it was. I was feeling very shy, but Jesus smiled and was so kind when he spoke to me, he asked if he could use my lunch to feed the people. I said yes, but I was confused. How could Jesus feed so many people with my small lunch? My mother had given me two small smoked fish and five small loaves of bread. That is just enough lunch for me, but 5,000 men and even more women and children? No way! Jesus thanked me for my lunch, then he did a miracle. He lifted my lunch basket up in his hands and thanked God for the food, and he broke the bread in the fish into 12 baskets. What? Yes, he kept breaking the food into pieces, and God kept making more and more food until all the baskets were full. Everyone sat down in groups and waited for the disciples to bring some food. All of the people ate and there was even leftover food. Wow, I know that must have been amazing to hear Jesus teach and pray and then do a miracle. Oh, it really was. Jesus used what I had to feed all of those people. He made me feel so important even though I am so young. I'm so glad I was able to help Jesus and help all the other people there. I learned that Jesus can use everyone no matter how young you are. Now I want to thank Samuel, David, and the boy with the lunch for coming today. They all show us that God can use us even when you're young. This is Inform You saying good night and remember, 
1 Timothy 4.12 Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. I can be anything that he wants me to be I can climb the high 